Okay, so today's project is going to be, we are going to be making some St. Patrick's Day decorations for outside. I'm going to be doing some wood cutouts of Charlie Brown and Snoopy, and then painting them. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So I'm sorry for the mess, guys, but this is our garage, and <laughs> this is real life, so it's a little bit messy. But, uh, so this is the piece of wood that I'm going to use. We got it at Lowe's. I think I showed that. Um, it's a four foot by eight foot piece of plywood. I think that's what it is. Um, I think I actually want to flip it around and use the other side so there's not that writing. So give me just one second. So normally what I do, guys, is I go on to, like, Google Images and just kind of look up what I'm trying to create to give myself some inspiration um or you could just think up of you know if you're a good artist and you're already inspired by something you could just think it up on your own and draw it onto the piece of wood so i've got my husband here to help he is going to do the drawing because i have the like the skills of like a four-year-old makes lots of noise okay so my husband's got the image brought up on the ipad and he's just going to trace it out on the wood Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Use a pencil and lightly draw the figures until you get the dimensions to your liking. Make sure that you have an eraser handy. Now it is hard to erase pencil lines on wood completely. So once you are satisfied with what you've drawn, you're then gonna wanna go back and darken the lines that you wanna cut with the jigsaw. We spent a good 45 minutes drawing three characters. We had to redo Woodchuck's head four times to get the curvature right. I would not recommend using a jigsaw in sandals. Also, make sure you're wearing safety glasses. So one of the things that you don't want to do is you don't want to turn your jigsaw at a 90 degree angle trying to cut the line. So you see here my husband kind of goes one way and curves it a little bit and then comes back and cuts out the corners. Same thing right here. He's just going back and cutting the corners. The reason you do this is if you cut it at too sharp of an angle, you risk breaking or bending your blade. It's actually really easy to use this jigsaw. I cut out one of the characters myself, but since my husband is far better at using a jigsaw than he is using a camera, I had to scrap that footage. And there they are, the finished product. Now all that needs to be done is they need to be sanded and painted. All right here I'm sanding off the rough edges and some of the pencil marks. The reason why I'm doing this is because the pencil marks show through the paint somewhat. Um, and it also creates a smoother surface. But this part isn't completely necessary. No one's gonna notice these little details except for you. And if you don't end up sanding and the pencil marks do show through, you can just add a couple more layers of paint. But again, no one will notice this but you, unless someone comes up and gets real close and starts examining it. So you could use any kind of paint. Um, but I just used a cheap Walmart acrylic paint. 
Um, apple barrel works really well. I've made most of my um, wood cutouts using this kind of paint. I'm supposed to have a dark green and a light green, but I'm just gonna mix white with this green and make it a lighter green when I get to that part. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna paint all of the back side of them black. That way when I look out into the yard or wherever, um, you don't see the, just this like, you know, wood color. I like to have like the back of it black. I mean, you could also paint it any, any other color that, you know, you wanna see when you look, you know, out your windows, you're gonna see the back of it. And I also, I'm going to paint around the edges. might be wondering like oh my gosh you're painting right directly on your kitchen floor I'm not worried about it um, my kitchen floor is easy to, it this this kind of paint wipes right off if you get it like right away so if I get any on the floor I'll just wipe wipe it up as quickly as I can and it won't cause a problem but you could always put you know some like an old piece of wood or something and have this sitting on it as you, you paint or you know some painters plastic take a look at my drawings here and see where I need some borders with the black to distinguish what colors will be what. So for the most part, you just need two coats with like the green color and like black, but with like the lighter colors, yellow and the, the peach colored like skin color, I usually do three coats.
So the very last thing you're gonna to wanna to do with these is to cover them with a clear coat. And I'll show you which one that I use. Spray enamel, you get it at Walmart, you can get it at Lowe's, but you're just gonna to wanna to spray it a couple of times. I usually do a couple coats, front and back. And that seems to do the trick. I mean, I've used some of my wood cutouts several years in a row now and they're still holding up. So I'm gonna take them out into the garage and spray them down a couple times. After that, you're golden. You can put them into the ground. that I've made in the past. If you would like to see a video on what I'm going to do for Easter, let me know down in the comments.